and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. I hope you're all having a lovely Sunday. Um, so today's video is a mid-month wrap-up. I think every month this year, apart from February when I wasn't making videos, I've done a mid-month wrap-up because of my reading, because of my reading, um, because I've been doing so much reading. So it, it feels nice to do a mid-month wrap-up and talk about the books that I've read halfway through the month. Um, and I'm going to be talking about six books today. So as you may well know, I've been reading Little Women themed books. So um, in the first half of the month I've read Little Women and then I've read two adaptations um, but I've also read a few other things so I'm, I'm linking it all in but what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the non-Little Women books first and then I'll talk about Little Women and the two um, adaptations of that that I've read. Um, so yeah so let's start with the first book that I read um, this month and it was an audiobook of On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. Um, now this is set in the Garden Heights um, series um, after I read The Hate You Give um, was it last year we did a book versus film for The Hate You Give? I think it was. Yeah, I think so so I, I, I thought I'd previously read this, but I'm pretty sure I didn't finish it. Um, but last year, David and I did um, something called Book versus Film, um, where I read the book and David watched the film of um, of a, a book, that, a film that's been adapted from um, a, uh, a book. And um, yeah, really enjoyed reading that. And then went on to read Concrete Rose, which is another book set in the series about Star, who is the person in... Um, in uh, The Hate You Give, her father. And then this is um, another book set in that same um, sort of area. So although um, there's there's none sort of repeating characters or anything, it's set in the same area. And yeah, I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. It covers some really, it's YA and it covers some really important issues. Um, you follow a, a girl called Brie who wants to be a rap star like her father who is now dead. Um, and there's the there's, there's subject of sort of addiction and poverty, gun crime and, and gang culture in there. Um, yeah, and I just think that Angie Thomas tends to do sort of like young people really well in a sort of non-patronising way and also is really good at doing adults in that sort of young person world really well too. Um, so yeah, so I gave it three stars and I enjoyed it. What I will say, I listened to the audiobook of it and as Brie is, as I aforementioned, a rap star, um, the, the audiobook had rapping in it, which I thought was very, like, it was it was very performative and I, 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 I enjoyed that very much um, in the audiobook. So yeah, great. Uh, next one I read was one that I read on my e-reader and that's Snot Girl, Green Hair, Don't Care, Volume 1 by Brian Lee O'Malley and Leslie Hung. Um, this is a, um, a graphic novel um, about a girl called Lottie who seemingly, as is always the case on social media, her life looks perfect and all of her photos she's beautifully primped and preened and things like that, but she's got allergies. Um, and although this is sort of like, um, uh, her life isn't quite as uh, as perfect as it would seem due to these allergies, there's a lot of, it, there's sort of a, a, a deep dive both metaphorically and can you do any other deep dive just a normal deep dive on fakeness and on what your life is compared to what it is outwardly going so yeah I thought it was okay I really liked the artwork and the bright colors and obviously I like like I liked her green hair <laughs> but um yeah I, I just don't, just wasn't that into it and I don't think I'll be carrying on with the series but yeah I thought it was fine for what it was I just gave it two stars and just just cracked on with it really. Right, the next book I read was Little Women, but I'm gonna get onto that later. Um, but yeah, the, the final book uh, that I read was not Little Women, was Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller, which I gave four stars to. Um, and I really enjoyed this more than I thought. So I bought this when it first got, I hadn't heard of it before, as is always the case with these books, where this was long listed for the Women's Prize. Um, bought this and thought, yeah, I'll get round to it, get round to it. And I never did get round to it. It was like one of the, uh, one of two on the list that I hadn't read, This and Summer by Ali Smith, which I still haven't read. Um, and I was thinking, Oh, well I don't I don't think it will be on the the uh, shortlist because I hadn't heard much hype about it well anyway it ended up getting on the shortlist for the women's prize which is fantastic and then I was like well I've got to read it now so picked it up and I really really loved it so much so that when I finished it I was like bloody hell I could sit and read that again I really enjoyed it I love the sort of slow build of it and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it's about so it's about two a, a set of twins Jeannie and Julius who are 51 which I enjoyed straight away because so very rarely will you hear from the protagonist um from from a from a main character in a book who is of that age has no children or anything like that anyway they live in rural poverty in a um a cottage which is sort of um hasn't got um 
an indoor toilet, hasn't got central heating, etc, etc. Hasn't got electricity. Well, it has got electricity, but I think the electricity gets shut off. Anyway, and they live with their mother, Dot, who dies suddenly. Um, and they've both lived, particularly Jeannie, um, a very sheltered life. Um, Jeannie um, had, was told when she was younger by her mother that she's a heart condition she can't exert herself um which is which led her to not going to school which led her to not being able to read and write um, which has led her to not having um a, a reliable job um and julius is a bit more sort of worldly he's out and about he can't travel in cars he gets very very car sick which i found like it was a really odd detail but like that must happen to people. My sister used to be incredibly car sick when we were younger. So yeah, that like, like it's just something that I haven't really thought about for a long time, about how car sick people can get. So yeah, so he is still sort of strapped to this rural poverty life because he can't travel, he can't drive a car and he can't travel very far in a car. So anywhere he can get to in terms of on his bike is where he will work. Um, yeah, and then when Dot dies, their mother, um, their sort of family, and when I say secrets, I, I do mean secrets, but it's not sort of like family scandal. It's more sort of like just getting to know their mother a little bit more and a little bit more about like things that they've been led to believe in the past which weren't actually true um but yeah i really enjoyed the unraveling of it and sort of like the coming to coming to terms with everything but yeah the writing itself it felt so sort of luxurious to me and every time i sort of returned to it i felt like it was something special i really really enjoyed it and i like and as I said when I finished it I want I wanted to pick it up and read it again now when I read this I, I maybe I thought I recognized the name Claire Fuller but I hadn't thought any more of it but then when I looked at the back once I finished it I realized that she wrote Our Endless Number Days um which is a book that was very popular on booktube when I just first started booktube I remember getting my mitts on it when I lived in that first flat with the Mickey Mouse wall if you remember um so yeah she's also written Swimming Lessons which I'm sure I've read and Bitter Orange which is a more recent book of hers which I haven't read so I will definitely be getting to Bitter Orange and having a re-look at Swimming Lessons to see if I've read that too but yeah really enjoyed it gave it four stars um really enjoyed it like would love to read it again which is just so unusual but thought it was great so let's get on to the little women book so um and th the first thing i wanted to do with this sort of little women readathon was read little women first so i've got this um cloth bound copy of uh no penguin cloth bound hardback a cloth bound classics um which are lovely all of these like there's a whole series of these although i did get it a bit dirty where Coralie Bickford Smith does the um does the design on them this one's got scissors on it um so yeah what I didn't realize when I picked this up was that um this th this copy includes little women and good wives if you saw my TBR or my haul from earlier this month I actually hauled a paperback copy of good wives and was like oh I'm gonna read that once I finish this but this included um little women and good wives um and sort of follows right up until and I've got to be careful because I, in my head I just assumed that everybody knew the plot of Little Women just because it's sort of like out there a bit in popular culture and things like that but there's it's a story about four sisters um, and they're living at home with their mother their father is away working as a pastor for the army um, and uh, nearby to them there's a very very rich man called Mr Lawrence who they're sort of slightly intimidated by they haven't had much to do with um, and they've got sort of um, impressions that he's a grumpy old man um, um, and his grandson, um, Laurie, uh, comes to stay um, with his uh, grandfather and they uh, form a friendship with Laurie. And then it's um, their life as children um, and this, this particular copy that includes good wives um, goes up until they are grown up and uh, they marry and etc, etc. So yeah, I found this super cosy and super warming and um, wholesome is the word that I will use. Um, and yeah, more sisterly love in it. All right, David. Then you can sort of throw a, 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 a shitty, stick. shitty stick at if you wanted to throw a shitty stick at some sisterly love. Um, and I really had a nice time reading this, but... I've given it three stars because there's uh, there was a few things in here which really sort of um, rest restricted my enjoyment of it. I enjoyed it sort of superficially in that I found it cosy, I found it wholesome, I enjoyed the sisterly love. But then there's two things that I was like, Ugh, I can't get any more enjoyment out of it. So firstly is that there is a lot about God in here and there's a lot about thanking God and... Um, and it's a religious, they're a religious family and things like that. And I, as an atheist reading this, every time that sort of come up, I was like, fucking hell, we're going on about God again. Like, 
it, and it was it was relentless in all honesty it was constant and like as i said their family their father's a pastor and stuff like that so that is like uh, something that is mentioned throughout the book but for me every time it was brought up i was like oh and the strange thing was is that i thought i had read this book before um and I, I think maybe I read an abridged version when I was younger, um, when I was in middle school, so I would have been like anywhere between the age of 9 and 13, um, and I don't remember it being about God at all then, I just remember it being about four sisters and sort of like Christmas, so yeah, I, I hadn't fully prepared myself for that, and then the second thing is that, and this this appears particularly in the, towards the, the uh, towards the end of the, the book, or in the good wife section of the book, is that there's a lot of like, oh, you should be a good wife to your husband, um, because of this, and like, the sort of examples are given, particularly with the Meg character, um, like you should like the things you should do in order to to please your husband at like the cost of her own happiness really um and i didn't agree with that either now this book's written in 1837 i think it was 1868 1868 was first published so yeah i know it's of its time but if we're being honest and like a few people asked me about my um my uh star rating of three stars to this book like i can't give it more than three stars because there was things in it that that made me enjoy it less and those were two those are two of the things that made me enjoy it less so yeah gave it three stars and like i said superficially the reading experience of it was really fun and i like i, I like the girls i really like the girls i really like joe and i really like amy um a few people um asked me who they think i'm like and i think in my head i think i'm like joe but in reality i am amy so yeah but enjoyed this and yeah but one of the main plot points of this and like again like i said i didn't realize that people wouldn't be aware of the um of the, of the, the, the this this the big plot point which i'm going to mention now and i will do this when i'm telling you to come back um so go now but beth the um second to youngest daughter dies um and that's always been quite a big thing like in the film that i've seen it's a very big thing um i remember wh whenever it's mentioned it's a really big thing um when i had read an abridged version of little women when i was younger beth doesn't die in that and i was confused because i already knew going into it that beth was going to die but what i was surprised about is that how sort of like quickly her death came and went so she's poorly for quite some time um and then she's basically dead and then that's it <laughs> so i was really surprised about that anyway come back friends come back so there we go um yeah i gave it three stars and i enjoyed the coziness of it then on to the two um adaptations i've read of it the first one i picked up literally i finished this on cozy reader night and picked this up instantly um and that's meg joe beth and amy uh, this is a graphic novel uh, modern retelling of by ray tesario and brie indigo um and this was a great adaptation it was sort of diversely brought up to modern day um with added themes and plot point points which didn't really feel very sort of like elbowed or crowbarred in for example a biracial family they uh, the children so the older two uh, meg and joe um both uh so what happens is is that Joe's uh, mum and Beth's dad come together um, and then had um, no Joe's mum and Meg's dad come together and had Beth and Amy. So they're a big so already biracial family, which is different to the original book. Um, there's LGBTQ themes and characters in there. There's disability representation. The artwork was great. It was really really radiant and fun and felt warmth and sort of the colour of it and the illustrations added to sort of like the youthfulness of the whole thing. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. I actually gave it four stars, which is a star more than the than the little women original text but yeah i really got a lot out of it and i really enjoyed it um there's a lot of so at the end of each sort of um uh, graphic novel chapter there'll be an email either um to um to or from one of the march sisters um to their family to their father things like that yeah i found it really fun and if you enjoy little women um i think you'll you'll really really love this so yeah four stars um and then the last one is one that i finished yesterday um and that's this wide night by sarvat hassin um and this is blurbed as little women meets um the virgin suicides and um with an ending as sort of predictable as that blurb will will give you and 
I kept thinking, is this where it's going? And it was going. So there was no sort of surprises in there. And also, also so it was told from um, the lorry perspective. But this is set in um, Pakistan, in Karachi, um, sort of via London, and then a uh, menorah, an island where it sort of all ends. Um, and yeah, it was the point, come from the point of view of the lorry character, who's, whose name is, is Jimmy or Jamal. Um, and yeah, it just didn't really work that much for me. It felt quite faded and a bit tired. And also I felt like the girls themselves were there for Jimmy, um, Jimmy's sort of entertainment or enjoyment. And quite often, if he was talking to or about one of the sisters, you were, is that our uh, vegetarian mm -hmm. sausage rolls? <laughs> the alarm, the uh, alarm's just gone off. If he was talking to or about one of the sisters, I wasn't sure who he was talking to or about. So I was often sort of like going back thinking, who is he talking to? Like, um, because I think for him, they were one sort of big family unit that he just wanted to be part of. And like, I, yeah, it just, it just didn't really sit very well with me. And like, as I said, no one felt truly identifiable. And even at points, I forgot that the perspective was of, from, from the Laurie character. So yeah. And also all the tragedy in sort of Little Women. So there's a few sort of tragic points throughout where people fall ill and people die um, and stuff like that. All of that felt sort of like amped up a little bit. So um, where someone might fall ill in the original text, they end up dying in this book. And or, or where one person might end up dying um, in the original text, two people end up dying in this text. Yeah, I ended up giving it two stars, which was a shame because I had really high hopes for this and I thought it would be um, a real different retelling and, and something a bit special. But yeah, it didn't feel like that for me at all. Um, so yeah, so those are the six books that I've read in the first half of um, March. I am currently um, about a third of the way through another um, Little Women retelling uh, called The Spring Girls um, by Anna Todd. Um, so that will be wrapped up. And uh, yeah, I've got an audiobook on the go as well so yeah tune in at the end of the month for the rest of the books that i've read in may and i will see you all again soon for another booktube video goodbye